John Stiki, and we are here representing Fairly Dickinson University tonight. And we will be presenting to you Kanku, our concrete canoe. Um, first, some physical properties on Kanku. It's about 20 feet in length, and the weight is 210 pounds. Um, the average depth is about 15 inches, and the thickness is about a half an inch. Uh, as you can see, we stained Kanku black with yellow lettering, so that the name of the school, as well as the name of our concrete canoe, could be easily seen. Um, some engineering properties on Kanku. The unit weight is 55 uh, pounds per cubic feet. The compressive strength is 1350 PSI, while the tensile strength is 670 PSI. Lastly, the fluctual strength is 1390 PSI. Uh, for reinforcement this year, we used the geo grid as opposed to what we used last year, which was chicken wire. Uh, the geo grid is uh, more durable and lighter. I now present to you our car, who will go over the mixed design of the canoe. So this year's mixed design, we use single spheres in addition to the recycled glass beads that we used from last year. Before this verdict, we actually used, uh, we actually tested various uh, recyclable aggregates such as EPS beads and cork beads. Uh, our mix is essentially, quote unquote, as green as it gets because um, all the materials are recyclable aggregates except for the pork and cement. Another way we reduce our carbon footprint was that during the pour from last year's canoe, we actually had a zero slump, which provided good adhesion to the slippery sheet metal mold. However, at the same time, we would waste about 10 to 20 percent of each batch due to the quick set, quick setting time. Um, to ensure quality control this time around, we increased the slump and also used a new method of pouring, which allowed us to set the concrete despite the slippery sheet metal mold. Deja will now talk about the um, analysis of the canoe. The main objective of the analysis was to ensure we have a stable structure that is going to withstand the rigors of the competition. To achieve this, we imported our CAD model into the analysis software SAP 2000. After that, we assigned a unit weight of the concrete <coughs> to be 55 pounds per cubic feet, and we assumed it was a simply supported beam with a pin at the bow and a roller at the stern. After that, we uh, applied two point loads, straight down, 185 pounds each, substituting for two male rollers. However, this only gave us the hydrostatic forces, which means the canoe was standing, it wasn't moving at all. To get more realistic perspective and more realistic <laughs> results, we had to find the jack forces, which involved us finding the area of the canoe and the velocity of the canoe. And now Nahan is going to talk about the mold, the process of making, and the process of making the canoe. As the outside, I'll be talking about the mold. Before making our mold, we knew we needed to, to have a project that would be reliable and cost efficient. The way we constructed our mold was by looking at last year's canoe, taking the good, and improvising the weaknesses. Last year, we used stainless steel sheets to construct the mold. The outcome was excellent, so reusing the stainless steel sheets was a no-brainer. Uh, in addition from working so well, they were also time and cost efficient. A weakness of last year's canoe was its weight. Uh, after trial and error, we, we were able to come up with a mix that was lighter than last year's, a mix that allowed us to easily maneuver a canoe on the water, and it was also strong enough to withstand the rigors of the competition. After having decided what we were going to do about our mold, we then looked at, at our reinforcement. As John said, as a group, we all decided to use GeoGrid. The reason why we chose GeoGrid is because it is light, it's flexible, it's easy to shape, and it's very strong. After uh, deciding we were using GeoGrid for a reinforcement, we then began to look at our pouring method. Considering we were using GeoGrid this, this, this year, we decided to pour a thin layer of concrete along the bottom of the canoe. As you can see in this picture, once we had that, that layer poured, it was easy to work on the walls of the canoe. After having, having poured a thin layer of concrete along the entire mold, we then placed the, the geogrid over the slider. After, after pre precisely cutting our geogrid, we then did our final pour onto, onto this, this mold. Essentially, these two layers became one with the geogrid. Uh, we allowed our, our, our canoe to sit for three and a half weeks for, for the curing process. During this time, we made sure we had a person that had daily access to the canoe in order to keep it cured. And, and to hydrate it. After the three weeks and a half were, were completed, we removed concrete from the mold and we realized our pour was a success. And this is our final product. 